Hello, in today's art talk, we are going to be talking about American artist Milton Avery. The son of a tanner, Avery began working at a local factory at the age of 16 and supported himself for decades with a succession of blue collar jobs in mechanics and construction. The death of his brother-in-law in 1915 left Avery as the sole remaining adult male in his household, responsible for the support of nine female relatives. However, a year or two after he turned 20, he signed up for a class in lettering at the Connecticut League of Art Students because a magazine ad promised it that it was a route to make money. The class ended up being full, but Avery enrolled in a drawing course and soon became entranced with the arts. However, his family's financial situation precluded him from making art as his full-time career. He worked as a file clerk during the evening to allow him to take classes at the more prestigious School of the Art Society of Hartford, where he won awards in portrait painting and drawing. In 1924, he met Sally Michael, a young art student, and in 1926, they married. Her income as an illustrator enabled him to devote himself more fully to painting. Beginning in the 1930s, the two began developing a, quote, lyrical collaborative style that Robert Hobbes described as the Avery style. Sally acted as the breadwinner for the couple through her freelance illustration work, but this wasn't always lucrative. Sally admitted, quote, the struggle to survive was sometimes a little grim, but my firm belief in Milton's talent buoyed us over the dark days. Avery's biographer, Barbara Haskell, wrote that the couple's entire lives revolved around art. Rising at six in the morning, they would often draw or paint straight through until dinner. Avery and his wife lived in New York next door to Stuart Davis in the artist complex known as the Lincoln Arcade, and Marcel Duchamp and Francis Picabia frequently visited the building. Avery also formed friendships with some of the most significant artists of the day, including Mark Rothko, Adolf Gottlieb, and Barrett Newman. Rothko and Gottlieb were 18 years Avery's junior and Newman 20 years, and all of them openly acknowledged their debt to his work. Some of his work might seem a little simplistic to us in 2024, but his use of shape and color were very modern for the type of art that was being commonly created and accepted at this time and before him. Beginning in 1935, Avery, Avery exhibited with some of the top galleries in New York. And by 1943, uh, he began showing with Paul Rosenberg and his career really was in full swing. He attained critical acclaim with critic Hilton Kramer lauding his skills as a colorist and others in the art world dubbing him the American Fauve, like the Fauvists. His first solo exhibition was at the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. in 1944. Artists and critics alike have lauded Avery's employment and application of color on canvas, which can be seen here in Checker Players. In 1952, the revered artist teacher Hans Hoffman said that, quote, Avery was one of the first to understand color as a creative means. He was one of the first to relate colors in a plastic way. From his early Impressionist landscapes to his later paintings of these bright, flattened forms, Avery's career is marked by a brilliant intuition for color. I particularly like this piece. To me, it almost has kind of a mod quality to it, which was the design style and subculture of the 1960s. So Avery was really ahead of his time with his style. As well, if you took the figure out of this piece, the background looks a lot like the color field paintings of Mark Rothko, who of course was influenced by Avery. From the studio is a much lauded Avery piece, featured prominently in the artist's 1960 retrospective at the Whitney, and it's described as a reflection of Avery coming into the fullness of his career. It's both an interior scene and an outdoor scene. Uh, the viewer is placed inside a room in the foreground, looking through a large opening onto a veranda that turns and looks out onto a lush wall of greenery. As always, Avery's color is front and center here. This piece leans slightly more abstract with the birds being painted in a more simplistic form and the greenish black brush strokes resembling plants on the ground. But like before, the purple and pink hues of the background echo Fauvist and color field styles. Avery had a serious heart attack in 1949 that he never fully recovered from. 
And while he was in his convalescence, he started experimenting with printmaking and his work started leaning towards more neutral colors as can be seen here with robed nude. It's only within the last few decades that Milton Avery really achieved the wider recognition that he deserves. He experimented with thinning his paint and hand staining his canvases long before the color field painters obtained fame by doing so. He was a trailblazer for using color, minimalism, and shape in a very modern and interesting way. Thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed learning about American artist Milton Avery.